My name is Ivan, and welcome to the channel. My goal here is to document my progress breeding guppies, starting from just a small batch of four females and one male. My hope is to learn a little more about the color genetics of these fish. My understanding is that guppy color genes are complicated and actually never involves just a single gene, but rather the interaction of many. I won't pretend that I'm an expert, but I do anticipate that over time, I will begin to understand how individual traits are passed down. I will document what I can and periodically upload videos of my progress so that I have data to look back on and so that you could follow along too. So starting from the very beginning, my initial group of fish have varying characteristics. My male is completely white without any additional markings. He is short finned with a blonde based body color. I particularly enjoy guppies that have a solid white color. Uh, without any overly large fins. Uh, now, three of my females are gray-based and one blonde-based. I will start my project with a single goal. Starting from scratch, can I fix the all-white phenotype that my male has after several generations using just these initial group of fish? This project actually started over 10 months ago, so I apologize if I don't have great footage of my initial females and their fry growing up. I did not plan on making videos then, and the females have passed since. So we will kick off this project with cross number one with the first female. We will call or label her female number one. Her base body color is gray. Gray base body color is a dominant trait, and we will represent this with a capital letter G. But this is not the full story. She inherits two alleles from her parents for this trait. So we will need two letters to complete the story. However, at this point, it's a bit of a mystery if she is homozygous, meaning big G, big G, or heterozygous, big G, little g, for gray. The little g represents the recessive trait for blonde-based body color in guppies. And we need both little g, little g for us to visually see the blonde phenotype like in our male. Our white male can only pass down his recessive trait for blonde-based body color, G, to all his offspring. If we use a regular Punnett square and assume that female number one is homozygous for gray, then we could expect all her offspring will be heterozygous for gray. If she is heterozygous for gray, then we would expect a 50-50 split between gray-based and blonde-based offspring. We will ignore all other inherited traits for now simply because, well, I don't know enough to make any judgment or assumptions. So let's see how the offspring turned out. Female number one dropped a total of 32 fry before she unfortunately passed. 20 were female and 12 were male, making it a 62 to 38% split respectively. As soon as the fry were born, we could actually tell that 100% of her offspring had a gray-based body color. Therefore, we could be fairly certain that female number one was homozygous for this trait and that 100% of her offspring is heterozygous for gray. Interestingly, of the 32 fry, 22 had red tails and a darker back half of the body. The other 10 had either a scattered red pattern or no color, depending on if they were male or female. These 10 also lacked the dark back half coloring that their siblings had. For the moment, we will call these either reds or non-reds, even though the non-red males still have red splotches. Doing some math shows us that we have a 69% red versus 31% non-red indicating that we have an unknown recessive trait or traits revealing themselves. Additionally, most of the red males also have darker or some black on their pectoral fins. This was entirely unexpected since, well, neither of the parents had this trait. Anyway, overall, I think we were lucky with this cross. We did not have excessive variation among the siblings. I plan on keeping two of the different males from this cross, but 
To stick with my goal to fix an all-white phenotype like that of the male, I plan on backcrossing some of these females with the male, and I will be showing these results in a future video. But this is just the first step. We still have three other females to look at from our original group. In the next series of videos, we will look at and document the results of these crosses, and in the next video, I will focus on female number two specifically. So, if this is something you find interesting as much as I do, please consider sticking around. I plan on uploading regular updates of my progress and take you along as we get closer and closer to our goal. I don't expect this to be easy, but that's what makes this fun. I'll see you next time.